Let's do the famous uh, forward flick that David Morgan used to use to test out his whips after he made them. How's it going you guys? Connor here with Caliber Whips and I have a new project that I'm working on today. It is an eight foot long nylon Indiana Jones themed bull whip. So I have just started today. Um, this is not going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial. This is just going to be kind of a progression walkthrough, kind of uh, what the uh, steps entail because the construction of this whip is a bit different from my other whips. For example, we're going with a 12 inch steel nail or steel spike, pretty much like the original David Morgan bull whips. They contain a steel spike. So we're kind of keeping that theme here today. It's going to be very similar to the actual Indiana Jones style bull whips, including the lead lining. So I have a piece of parachute cord. This is filled with lead. So what I have to do for this process, it's very tedious, but it is worth it. I have to pretty much go through, here, let me see if I can zoom up for you guys. There we go. So what I have to do is I have to go through and I have to pick out individual balls of lead that I think look the, the most round because some of them look really bad and they'll snag the paracord if I try to drag it through. Some of them look really good. So I have to go through and hand pick the lead and line it up inside of this parachute cord. It's a tedious process. I have to do seven feet of it, but in my opinion, it is well worth it because the um, lead kind of gives the whip a whole different type of flow to it. It kind of has like a heavy liquid kind of flow to it. It's like a big wave. So I think it's really cool. It's definitely worth it. I'm actually selling two containers of lead like this up on my eBay store. So if you guys are interested in purchasing your own lead like this, be sure to check out the link in the description down below. But uh, yeah, other than that, I think once this is done, I'm going to mount the strands onto the steel spike, and then we're going to prep the core. So I'll show you guys uh, what that process entails. All right, so I have finished um, lead lining the uh, piece of parachute cord, as you guys can see. It definitely is worth it because even though it was a tedious process, um, it definitely is going to give the whip some life when it performs. But um, basically, so what I've gone ahead and did was I've prepared the core. I've obviously attached it to the uh, steel spike. However, I've also used some hockey tape to kind of give it some uh, volume here in the core and to kind of give it some springiness. Because since this whip is going to be very heavy, there's going to be a, there's going to be a lot of uh, pressure here on this transition, so I wanna make sure that it's extremely, extremely tight uh, so the steel spike doesn't end up punching or puncturing the side of the whip. So we gotta make sure that the transition is nice and strong, and one of the ways we do that is not only use our fiberglass tape, um, which I've, which I've uh, obviously wrapped it all the way down here several times, but also by using this uh, hockey tape to give it some volume, it also gives it a lot of protection. So that's what we're going to be using here. Um, and so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to attach the strands on the belly. This is going to be a five plat belly. No, not five plat. It's going to be a 10 plat belly. There's going to be five strands that I'm going to attach to it, but it's overall going to be a 10 plat belly. So I'll get back to you guys when this belly is done. All right. So the first belly is done. It is complete. So what I've gone ahead and did was I've actually applied a lot of binding um, to this whip, as you guys can see. So the binding that I used, let's see if I can show you guys. So for the inside of it, you guys can barely see the black in there, but I used this polyester um, like cord. Um, I actually have some of this for sale on my eBay store as well, so I'll put a link if you want to guys uh, if you guys want to see it, so it's the first link in the description. This stuff is extremely helpful for um, like really tight binding. So if you want to apply um, like a really tight, firm uh, binding to the whip, that's probably by far like the best stuff I've ever used. And then I used artificial sinew to also add a little bit more um, looser tension. So this stuff is more for medium duty. This stuff is more for heavy duty binding. So as you guys can see, I put a little bit here on the uh, end and then kind of staggered it. So there's a little bit here and then it increases and then it increases even more all the way down here. But down here, more towards the transition, I applied that black polyester cord. 
So hopefully you guys can see it, but it is very, very strong, very heavy duty. So I really like it a lot, but we are going to move on and add the second belly to the whip. So I've attached the second belly onto the whip. I finished braiding it and I also applied the binding to the whip. Now I wanted to make sure that there was plenty of binding on this transition. So let me show you guys real quick something really cool about this. So if I take the whip right here and I bend it, as you guys can see here, even though this is actually part of the whip, the uh, steel nail ends about here. It doesn't even move when I go to bend the overall whip. Watch this. That's what we're looking for. We want something extremely stiff down here because over time, this will wear down just a little bit, not, not by a lot but it will wear down just a little bit. And I wanna make sure that um, over time that the integrity of the binding isn't compromised. So it will get a little bit loose after you know years, possibly decades of use. Um, however, uh, the issue of the steel spike poking through the thong of the whip is no longer an issue with the amount of binding that we have. So with that being said, let's go on and uh, attach the overlay onto this whip. All right, so we have finished the overlay. I waxed it last night, so this morning I've just kind of been throwing it around, but kind of want to go over a couple of features of this whip for you guys. The uh, traditional David Morgan bull whip has a north to south wrist loop, an eight inch diamond flat handle, and then the we have the thong of the whip, but it ends with a light colored fall. A lot of David Morgan's bull whips have either a white or kind of a light tan colored fall. I didn't have either, so the customer was fine with the light gray. I think it works perfectly in this case. It looks really good. And then to finish it off, we have a black nylon cracker. So uh, with that being said, let's go out and uh, test crack this bad dog. All right, so here is the rollout. This whip turned out really, really good. Let's show, let me show you that from the front. Now, since this whip has a lot of lead in it, you just barely throw it out and it cracks. I don't know how well you guys can hear it because I have a microphone on my chest. All right, let's get some indie action going. Let's do the famous uh, forward flick that David Morgan used to use to test out his whips after he made them. Amazing. I like this a lot. Well, there you guys go. The Indiana Jones Bull Whip. It is the David Morgan design. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.